given the exciting news that this the very the very fact that this lunch took place motivated a young inspiring african to put his tie on as a as a sign of respect for this gathering of the good and great but this is a young man ladies and gentlemen who's done much more in his life than simply symbolic gestures like putting on a tie he has a philosophy which is the philosophy of all of you gathered here today and it is and i quote together as one we can accomplish anything and perhaps he may have learnt a little bit of that by sitting at the feet of one of our most inspiring leaders the world has seen please join me in welcoming the grandson of nelson mandela ndaba mandela thank you very much my sir <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Your Excellencies, distinguished gents, ladies, and gentlemen, I wish to warmly thank you, the United Nations, for paying tribute to my grandfather's 100-year celebration. You know, as part of this celebration, I decided to write a book in tribute of this great life that he lived. A tribute to talk about Nelson Mandela, not so much as a president or a revolutionary, but as a grandfather. To talk about the stories that would reaffirm the need for peace and reconciliation in today's world. My grandfather, as you know, was a man of great compassion. And so, learning, growing up with him, I learned that Nelson Mandela is a man who can connect to any human being on this planet Earth. And I'll tell you this because Nelson Mandela taught himself how to read and write Afrikaans, which was the main language in the apartheid government of South Africa. And so when Nelson Mandela was incarcerated all those years in Robben Island, he was of course assigned a guard to, to, to guard him. But there was a rule on the island that no guard could guard Nelson Mandela for more than three months. Because whether you liked him or not, Nelson Mandela would become your friend. You know, Nelson Mandela, right, because he was able to teach himself Afrikaans and became fluent in it, the wardens would get letters. But some of them did not have the education level of Nelson Mandela, and so Nelson Mandela ended up translating those letters for the wardens that were guarding him. And so because that touched them in a special way, next thing you know, the warden is smuggling an extra couple of slices of bread for Nelson Mandela, <laughs> an extra couple of blankets, and little favors like that. And of course, when the authorities found this about, they'd get this very angry and would exchange the, the guard. And it happened again to the next guard, and the next guard. So they had to come up with a rule to say, no guard can guard this man for more than three months. He's infectious. You have to watch out for him. One thing that Nelson Mandela really valued is children. He was asked a question. Say, Matiba, out of all those years you spent in jail, what is the one thing that you missed? And Matiba said, all those years I spent in jail, I never heard the sound of children. Now we all know the sound of children represents new hope. It represents a new beginning. New hope where we can redefine our culture, redefine the rules of engagement for society in a world filled with new challenges. They are the people who are going to be at the forefront of innovation and being able to really overcome some of these issues that we have. And when you look at the world that we're living in today, we all know we're not going to live here forever. So is it not our responsibility, our obligation, to make sure that we do what we can to empower young people so that they can have the necessary tools in order to get rid of these challenges so that they can fight new challenges and not the same old challenges that we've been fighting for the past hundred years. 
And so our foundation, Africa Rising, has come up with a leadership program that aims at millennials to groom these young people to become leaders in the spirit and in the light of Nelson Mandela. And in building this uh, leadership program, we are looking to partner with some of you here in this room who are interested to making sure that Nelson Mandela is not a leader that we hail as one of the greatest leaders in the 21st century, but we make sure that there are more Nelson Mandelas who are coming up in the next decades to come, which we call the 100 Mandelas. As we're celebrating 100 years of Nelson Mandela, let us start by grooming 100 Mandelas for the next generation of leaders. Ladies and gentlemen, the UN Sustainable Development Goals calls on all of us across society to be creative and innovative to address the challenges that they lay out. I am encouraged by the growing momentum across forward-looking companies across the world who are taking up the call to action around better business for a better world. I also commend business organizations who are advocating for meaningful action in line with the SDGs and the principles of corporate sustainability laid out by the UN Global Impact. More than ever, we need to build and invest and create opportunities and prosperity and human rights for all. Public-private partnerships are essential vehicle to bring about these aspirations. As an ambassador of UNAIDS, I am particularly concerned that we do not step back from working towards ending the HIV-AIDS epidemic as a public health threat by 2030. My message on AIDS is simple. Ending AIDS is everyone's business. Let us work together to leverage your ongoing commitments to help improve prevention and treatment services as well as respecting human rights across all your operations. Business as usual will not help us reach this goal by 2030. We know a new course is required and a new purse is required. Driven by a collective ambition to improve the state of the world. May the values of my grandfather advocate guide us in our daily actions and decisions within our organizations. Now, growing up with my grandfather, you can imagine, I met Michael Jackson at home. I met Fidel Castro in my own home. Mike Tyson, Michelle Obama, you name it. But the special thing that touched me about my grandfather is that he treated those people the very same way as Mama Oli who cooked for us, as Albert who cleaned the garden, as, as, as Bramaik who was the driver. Because Nelson Mandela understood that regardless of your race, your age, or your sex, or your history, we all have the potential to achieve greatness. Thank you very much.